Hello everyone and welcome to Cinematic Excrement. If you saw my last episode, you may recall at the end I mentioned I had never even heard of the movie that I'm about to review, and thus I had no idea what to expect. However, even if I did have some idea, I don't think it would have mattered because nothing could have prepared me for the sheer lunacy that is shining through. Directed by David Seltzer, starring Michael Douglas and Melanie Griffith, and based on the novel of the same name, Shining Through is a World War II drama with one of the most preposterous plots I have ever seen. And this is coming from someone who sat through both Birdemic movies. And at least Birdemic was funny, albeit unintentionally. Shining Through is just plain nuts. While the book received generally positive reviews, reactions to the movie were mixed at best. It managed to bring in about $21 million at the American box office, plus a similar amount internationally. That's certainly not nothing, but while I haven't been able to find any definitive data on the movie's production budget, I can't imagine how $21 million could be anything but a disappointment considering the star power involved. Interestingly, one of the trailers for the movie suggested a fall 1991 release date, but it appears this was pushed back as it actually hit the big screen in January of 1992. While I freely admit this is pure speculation on my part and it should not be interpreted as anything more than that, I have a sneaky suspicion that the producers actually thought they had an Oscar contender on their hands. After all, the movie does take place during World War II and it does talk about the Holocaust. If you do film about the Holocaust, Guaranteed an Oscar. But once they realized what kind of movie they actually had, perhaps test audiences did not give them the reactions they were hoping for, they gave Oscar season a miss and pushed it back to January. The funny thing is, this is how the movie was promoted using the late great Don LaFontaine's voice in that very same trailer that advertised the fall release date. They used to make movies this memorable. They used to make movies this powerful. They used to make movies this romantic. They still do. It's true, they do still make movies like that. This isn't one of them, but they still make them. So just how ridiculous is Shining Through? Glad you asked. Griffith plays a woman named Linda Voss, the daughter of a German-Jewish immigrant who can speak fluent German herself. This lends her a job as a secretary for some big-shot lawyer named Ed Leland, played by Douglas, who happens to need a translator. But over time, Linda comes to suspect Leland is more than he seems. And it turns out she's right. He's actually working covertly for the OSS. You're a spy, Mr. Leland. And how does she figure out he's a spy? Because she's seen a lot of spy movies, and apparently he acts exactly like the people in those movies. Yeah, that tracks. And you've seen too many movies, Miss Voss. Enough to know a spy when I see one. Not only has she determined he's a spy, but she actually tries to teach him to be a better spy, writing less obvious coded letters and whatnot. And yes, she also learned this from the movies. Jesus tap dancing Christ. This would be ridiculous on its own, but it's made worse when she actually gets some of the details from these movies wrong. For example, she mentions the movie The Fighting 69th starring Cary Grant and Brenda Marshall. Neither Grant nor Marshall appeared in that movie. She's supposed to be an expert on spying based on the movie she's seen, but she's not even an expert on the movie she's seen. So at this point, I have a pretty good idea where they're going with this premise. And I don't like it. At first, Linda is just acting as Ed's secretary and letting him know when other German interpreters are trying to trick him with phony translations, which is all well and good, and they become romantically involved because sleeping with your boss is always a good decision. But then Pearl Harbor happens and things start to go completely batshit, and not just because these soldiers are saluting indoors at a social function, which you are not supposed to do. Ed, or should I say, Colonel Leland, abandons his lawyer cover and goes off to do whatever the hell he's doing with the OSS. And Linda also goes to work for the military in the War Department's Information Center. And this is how she keeps tabs on her man as she figures out his code name is Trooper? Oh, come on. That has got to be the most generic code name ever. Although it's also the name of one of the greatest metal songs of all time, so I guess it's not all bad. Anyway, Linda eventually reunites with Ed and starts working with him directly. And this is where we find out the Nazis have plans to develop what Ed calls a bomb that can fly itself, or what we would call a guided missile. And indeed, the Nazis were among the first to use guided missiles, so points for historical accuracy, I guess. 
The Allies had a spy in Germany trying to gain access to these plans, but the spy was recently compromised and presumed dead. So they need a new spy to step in. Oh gee, I wonder where they're going with this. Linda convinces Ed to install her as the new spy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a glorified secretary is now a spy for the Allied forces. And how does she convince Ed to give her the job? She makes him a strudel. I'm sure you're waiting for me to say something else, but there is nothing else. That's literally it. She makes him a goddamn strudel and okay, you're a spy now. She is about to be sent into enemy territory, posing as a German in order to find information about a new weapon being developed by the Nazis. And literally her only qualifications are she can speak German and she can cook. Remember that second one, by the way, because the movie won't. I suppose I should point out that in the book, Linda did receive some form of training before they shipped her off to Germany. But in the movie, they don't bother with any of that bullshit and just put her on the train to Berlin. Linda even casually says she has virtually no training at all. Like it's no big deal. This is America. Training is for pussies. After sneaking into the country via Switzerland, she meets up with her contact, some German woman named Marguerite, played by Jolie Richardson, and almost immediately bungles the whole mission. All she has to do is talk to some fishmonger who is secretly another spy and give him a simple one-sentence code. Not only does she get the code wrong, she nearly gets arrested by the f***ing Gestapo when a secret compartment in her handbag opens up. She's been in the country for all of one day. It gets worse from there. When she meets Marguerite's mother, she loudly asks as she walks into her house. But Marguerite, what if she suspects something? Well, she probably suspects something now, blabbermouth. Then she gets hooked up with a job as a cook for a Nazi officer who might have access to the missile plans and immediately makes a bad impression by spilling cucumber soup on another officer named Dietrich, played by Liam Neeson. And she screws up the rest of the food so badly, it's a wonder no one died from food poisoning. I mean, they're Nazis, so no big loss, but this wasn't the plan. And remember, she got the spy job in the first place because she can cook. Or at least she can make strudel. I guess cucumber soup was just too complicated. Incredibly, Dietrich finds her simply charming and hires her as a nanny. He must not like his kids very much. She's likely to get them killed. And then we get to the cherry on top of this Sunday of incompetence. Part of the reason why Linda wanted to come to Germany in the first place is she has family who are hiding from the Nazis and wants to find out if they survived. Eventually, she finds out where they were last seen in Berlin and decides to go looking for them. Linda, are you out of your goddamn mind? If they're in hiding, let them stay hidden. Your dumb ass will probably lead the Gestapo right to them. And when she goes looking for her family, she takes Dietrich's children with her because she can't come up with a believable excuse to take the day off. Our super spy, ladies and gentlemen. This would be stupid enough on its own, but to make matters worse, the Allies just happen to do a bombing run over Berlin that day. She doesn't quite get the children killed, but it ain't for lack of trying. This Linda character is fascinating for all the wrong reasons. I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of a Mary Sue, a character that is inexplicably good at everything. Unless, of course, you're on Twitter, in which case Mary Sue simply means female character I don't like. But anyway, Linda is like an inverse Mary Sue in that she is absolutely terrible at everything, but for reasons that just defy all explanation, things continue to go her way. Normally, you gotta be a white dude in Hollywood to fail upward like this. And maybe I could get past this if the character was in any way interesting, but she's not. She is as bland as bland can be. And part of that may be due to Griffith's performance, or lack thereof. With every line she delivers in this movie, she sounds like she's just taken a handful of sleeping pills and is about to drop. Even when she's supposed to sound angry, I get the impression she's only angry because she's been denied her nap time. This is not about you and me, goddammit. I want to do something important with my life. Throw out all the goddammits you want, Melanie. You still sound tired. You know what else I ain't buying? The relationship between Ed and Linda. Douglas and Griffith have no romantic chemistry whatsoever. Every time they share the screen, she sounds tranked and he just looks annoyed. Granted, I can't really blame him for feeling annoyed. I certainly do. And not just because of this crappy romance. What really annoys me is this movie's use of language. You see, when Linda first gets to Germany, we hear her and most of the people around her speaking German, as you might expect. With subtitles, of course. But then things start to get confusing. 
because at some point everyone just starts speaking English for no reason. For a moment I figured this was just because the filmmakers didn't want to subtitle the entire second half of the movie and they had everyone speak English for convenience while it was understood they were really speaking German. Delicious. <laughs> Makes me feel like a wolf. But then characters actually do start speaking German again. And they keep going back and forth and I have no idea what's going on. Could you pick a language and stick with it? And if Griffith is going to use English as a substitute for German, it might help if she could at least attempt a German accent to clue us in. But she still sounds American. And sleepy. Anyway, Linda still has herself a missile to find, and she suspects Dietrich might have access to information about the missile, since she spots him with a briefcase of IMPORTANT LOOKING DOCUMENTS. It's not clear what's in those documents, but they must be important. They're in a briefcase and everything. It's also not really clear why he's carrying all these documents around with him. I mean, if they are highly classified plans for a new weapon, then surely he wouldn't be taking them home with him and stashing them in a hidden room in his basement. I mean, that would just be completely implausible. But this is shining through where nothing is implausible. So of course he's taking the plans for the new weapon home and stashing them in a hidden room in his basement. And how does she find out about the hidden room in the basement? One of his kids just blabs about it in the most contrived way possible. If they come again, we'll go down to your secret room. Yes. All right? Yes. In the cellar. Well, it ain't much of a secret anymore. Nice going, kid. You said it was safe down there. You said nobody knew about it. Kid, you're speaking so loudly, I think everyone in France knows about it now. So, of course, she goes into the secret room in the basement, and of course the key is kept right above the door, thus rendering the lock pointless, and she gets microfilm pictures of everything. This is almost comically too convenient, but finally something actually goes horribly wrong and her cover is blown. And to make matters worse, her contact, Marguerite, is actually a double agent working for the Nazis. And it's a wonder Linda didn't figure this out before now, considering she's not exactly trying to hide it. Maybe the OSS should have taken a few minutes and trained her how to spot the fucking obvious. But despite getting shot twice, Linda still manages to fight back because Marguerite makes no attempt to take those scissors away from her, and she dies. Death by stupidity. That's rather fitting for this film. Somehow, Linda evades the Gestapo by hiding in the laundry chute and got him himmel. Really? No one spotted her finger there? Somehow, Ed finds her and, in the guise of a Nazi officer, tries to smuggle her out of the country. But here's the problem. He doesn't actually speak German, so he has to get her across the Swiss border while not being able to speak or understand what anybody is saying. Now, you might be thinking, why wouldn't they just send in someone who actually speaks German to get her out? Well, the thing you have to understand there is, these are the same people who made Linda a spy because she made Strudel once. Proper planning is not exactly their strong suit. And sure enough, his inability to speak German leads to trouble. Who could have predicted? So he solves it the American way. He tries to shoot his way out. No, for real. And somehow, despite taking several bullets himself, this works, and he makes it over the Swiss border. And once he does, the Nazis immediately show full respect for the Swiss border and just stop shooting. You know that point I gave the movie earlier for historical accuracy? Gone. This may very well be the silliest movie about World War II I have ever seen. Well, let me clarify that. The most unintentionally silly. It's not sillier than Jojo Rabbit, but Jojo Rabbit was silly by design. Shining Through expects its audience to take it completely seriously. And they're asking us to believe you can become a spy just by watching a lot of spy movies. You know, I've seen 2001, Interstellar, Gravity, Planet of the Apes, The Martian, Ad Astra, Apollo 13, Apollo 18. Based on this movie's logic, I should be a goddamn astronaut by now! It's actually kind of fascinating how this movie has no self-awareness at all. It starts out completely ridiculous and then just keeps ramping up the implausibility to unprecedented levels. You know you're in trouble when someone survives getting shot twice in the chest and it's the least unbelievable part of the movie. Even the framing device is ridiculous. Basically, it's an older Linda doing an interview with the BBC as the entire movie's story is told in flashback. And that by itself is fine, but they put Mel 
Melanie Griffith in the least convincing old woman makeup ever. I mean, this is what she actually looks like now at the age of 62. There's a slight difference between the two. How could anyone involved with the production have looked at that and thought, oh yeah, that's convincing. Nailed it. I mean, is there some reason why they couldn't have just, you know, cast an older woman? They do exist. The movie received a lot of negative press, and not just from the Golden Raspberry Foundation. In addition to negative critical reception from Roger Ebert and others, it was named the worst picture of 1992 by the now defunct Stinker's Bad Movie Awards. And of course, it was nominated for five Razzies and took home three. Worst Director for David Seltzer, Worst Actress for Melanie Griffith, and Worst Picture of the Year. And I'm not about to argue with any of that. I know I've spent a lot of time in this series telling you how much the Razzies suck, but for 1992, I think they pretty much nailed it. Well, okay, not entirely. They did botch the Best Original Song category, and not for the first time. You bastards seriously gave a Razzie to Alan Menken? Go f*** a weed whacker. And the other two nominees were Whitney Houston and Enya? Go f*** an entire assortment of garden tools. But otherwise, I really have no complaints. Shining Through is terrible. Even if you put the mediocre acting and dearth of romantic chemistry aside, this movie just constantly insults your intelligence. This goes beyond turning your brain off. I would have to have my brain surgically removed to buy this premise. And as such, I cannot recommend the DVD of this movie as anything other than a coaster. It sucks. Next time, we're going to talk about a movie I have actually heard of. And I must warn you, this silly little YouTube show may become a bit... indecent. Until then, I am the Smeghead, and Hollywood can suck it. They cut out his tongue.